start. If you don't mind, me, me and Zubin will be there. Firas yeah. will be the examiner and my other colleagues will also be the co-examiners. So, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So imagine this is imagine this is a real exam. You, you know, it's difficult within the constraint we have. But imagine you are actually entering a cubicle. Yeah. Sure. You are in the FRCS exam. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And you'll be taking through to examiners. The someone taking you through to the examiner. Mr. Maluk Simavale is your examiner here, and Zobin is the patient. Yeah. Hello, Sahib. Um, welcome Hi. to the exam. Um, I'm your examiner, Mr. Max Zavala. You have a patient at the moment. We're going to take you to see who is uh, having a problem with his knee. Yeah. Um, so, can, you, yeah. Yeah? can you please um, come and ask him a few questions, find out what's going on with him. You have five minutes. Yeah, I mean, hello, Mr. Manik. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Mr. Ferraz's co-examiner. This is Mr. Smith. Please carry on. Hello, hi, Mr. Smith. My name is Sahib. Thanks for uh, letting me examine you. Um, can you tell me uh, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Sorry? How old are you? I'm, how old are you? I'm 30 years old. 70, sorry. 70 years old. 70 years old, okay. And um, what seems to be a problem? How can I help you? I'm having pain in my left knee. Uh, how long has it been going on for? 20 years. It's for 20 years now. It's 20 years, okay. How has all this started? 20 years. The last 20 years, like it started slowly and gradually. Sorry, I can hardly hear you. Okay. Um, 20 years. It's a, for the last 20 years, I'm having this pain. Yeah. So is, then your, your left knee has got a pain. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any fall? Yes, I had a fall. Okay. When, when was this? Uh, I was driving a motorbike. Uh, so, like, I just fell on a motorbike. Yeah. So you fell from the motorbike 20 years ago, not recently? No. Right. Uh, was there anything done about that? Sorry? Any was there anything done, done about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I had some painkillers, I had some physical therapy, that's it. Right. Did you have any uh, fracture was diagnosed at the time? Uh, no, no, not really, like, it was not a fracture. All right, okay. Any other um, soft tissue injuries was diagnosed at the time? Yeah, it was like the doctors told me like there's some software injury, but uh, I carried on with that with it. Right. So you never say seek any medical attention for it. I went to uh, the, uh, the the doctor. He gave me medicines. Um, I applied some ice, and that's it. So did you manage since then well, or is it still uh, it was a problem since then? Uh, I in the beginning it was less, but slowly I'm I'm like feeling the pain. Right. So you're 70 year old. You had an injury from the motorbike 20 years ago when you were age, when you were age of 50. Right. And it, uh, then, um, so did you have a, a pain? Uh, your pain got better in the meantime. Uh, you can say that it got better. Yeah. But again, it was like a better or like worse, better, was like this kind of pain. So, okay. So it's the on and off pain. Was it actually uh, your, uh, your knee give way at all? Yeah. It sometimes it gives way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, is it going downstairs, going upstairs? Yeah, while going downstairs, it gives way. All right, okay, so uh, how do you manage normally stairs and everything? Uh, recently, I'm feeling more pain. Okay. Uh, climbing, the, uh, getting down the stairs. Does your knee click? Yeah. It does click. Yeah. Okay, anything else being done about it at all? Nothing, I'm just using a stick now. Uh, okay. To like uh, managing with it. Right. And in terms of uh, um, the knee gets swollen at all? Yeah, sometimes it's swollen, yes. Right. Okay. Um, and when you do any activity, what does it stop you doing it? Sorry? What, is what it? does it stop you doing? Uh, I have to do daily living, you know, yeah, I, I can't, I'm not able to play golf. Um, I'm not able to, you know, go to supermarkets for doing my usual stuff. Okay. Do you take any medication for it at all? Yes, I take painkillers on and off. Okay, any other medical problem you suffer from? Yeah. Yes, I have like um, hypertension and diabetes. Diabetes as well and hypertension. And you take medication for it. Any blood thinners at all? Uh, not really. Anything you're allergic to? No. A any other medical problem I need to know? No, nothing. What are your expectations and what do you want this to be done, done about that? 
I just want to like uh, get rid of the pain and uh, spend my life pain free. Does this does this and um, uh, pain disturb your sleep in the night too? Uh, not really, no, not at all. No. So you are managing with painkillers without disturbing your night sleep. Uh, I don't get the pain at night. It's only like when I walk, then only I get the pain. Right. And does does it? I mean, uh, your hobbies wise, do, do you work? Do you still work or are you tired? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not working right now. Uh, I used to work as a plumber, but I left my job. Uh, because of the pain. Because of pain, yeah. Okay. Any hobbies you still do which you can cannot manage anymore? I love playing golf, which I'm not able to play now. Right. Okay. So, um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, Mr. Mahalakshmi is a 70-year-old uh, gentleman who has uh, uh, a significant history of trauma at 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been actually having an on-and-off symptoms with it. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, he actually has got uh, pain, gets swelling and clicking, and uh, unable to do daily life activities. However, the night sleep is not disturbed. Uh, he has got a mechanical symptoms. He's finding increasingly difficult to do his um, his hobbies uh, like golf. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he is. Uh, um, uh, I would like to, since he hasn't had anything like uh, anything done more than uh, simple painkillers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and he's otherwise medically uh, only diab and diabetic, and he does take any medi and medication for it. So. Mm -hmm. My, um, my plan of management would be to start with the pain ladder uh, approach, uh, starting with increasing his painkillers, do get the physiotherapist to um, in, uh, okay. start I'll go with my examination first to confirm my findings. Uh, I'll do some uh, radiographs to confirm the, what the situation in the, in the knee is. I suspect, in my opinion, it could be a, a post-traumatic uh, osteoarthritis of the left knee. Okay, well, the time is up now. Okay. Uh, so we're moving up to the examination part, ideally now, during the real exam. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go through history now, and then we'll see where we are. Now, uh, Sahib, uh, just as of like, critiquing and things, how do you think it's... Please understand, what you're seeing today is exactly like this patient, what Zubin answered, he could have answered like an orthopedic surgeon, but he answered more or less like a patient. Do you agree to a certain degree? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that he was giving you, he's giving you what probably a patient would answer in real life. Yeah. Now, if you had to self-critique yourself and history take is important, what, where do you think your strengths were? So give me your strengths first. My strengths were to um, try to find out the, uh, systematically to starting from his uh, um, age, then uh, his uh, problem, then mm -hmm. dealing with the problem and the pain and that. However, I did jump over to the kind of in the end because I realized that I didn't ask about the important stuff in terms of the hobbies and things. No. However, in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the, I did, I think I did cover the issue most of the important uh, uh, bits in the uh, history. Okay. Uh, it would have been actually a bit more organized, but um, uh, right. but it, yeah, it, it went and I, I managed to actually get the most information. Okay. Uh, however, I did not go into the much detail in the accident and stuff like that because of the constraint of the time because I wanted to go cover a lot of stuff, but the symptoms was more towards the, the history was more suggesting towards the post-traumatic arthritis okay. and some injury which he's managing and a clicking. So I think he has got some. Yeah, so let me just uh, tell you something. Number one, I think your strength is, Sahib, and I don't know the other candidate, but your strength is, and I think my other examiners will agree with me, you're very clear, all right? So the way you talk, is very confident and clear. Is that right, Firas and the yes. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of um, straightforward uh, questions to get a straightforward answer. Yeah. And not, and yeah. So I think that's that's very important skill. If you if you questioning the question you're asking the patients are unclear or could have uh, multiple answers, then you will be just wasting time. So I think that's a very good useful skill, and that's what helps you get through most of the things within the five minutes. Yeah. So Ferris, please agree with Ferris. From today onwards, I want everyone to have, ask targeted questions. So that's one. So let's keep that in mind. The second thing, Sahib, is that, yes, you had jumped a little here and there. But let me, if you don't mind, let me just tell you the points you probably missed, okay? And this is for everyone. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. Yeah. Let's all start by this. Uh, I would say the first thing when you have to... Uh, in the exam, please introduce yourself as I would suggest, and but that do it, try not to say your first name, say Mr. Memon or Mr. Malikshmala, Mr. Arnett, okay, just try to say that. You don't have to say, I am a candidate in the exam, I am this, I am that, just say, is it all right if I ask you a few questions? That is short and straightforward, okay? So happy with that? So you are taking the patient's permission, 
but not waiting for an answer and not giving the whole spiel. I'm one of the candidates. Is it okay? Can I examine you? Give me pain, no pain. Don't say all that. Happy with that? Sure. Yeah. So I'm Mr. Malikshmarala. Is it all right if I ask you a few questions? Mr. Yeah. Smith, I understand. Now, in the exam, Sahib, there'll be two scenarios. You'll either be told that this patient got a problem with the left knee. You may be given a slip of paper saying that... Uh, oh, boss saying that it's a problem with the left knee, or you'll say just start with what's your patient's problem. So if the patient has been told that it's a problem with the left knee, let's start off that I understand you have a problem with the left knee, how long has it been going on? Now, for everyone, if someone says 20 years, please understand he's not waited 20 years to see you. I know NHS waiting lists are long, but no one will wait 20 years to see anyone. All right. So try to come down and tell the patient, I understand that, but what makes you come now? Has it become worse when? So please okay. try to get the presenting symptom. All right. So therefore, the presenting symptom will be two years or one year. Try to get out of them. Is that is the most best tip I'll tell all of you. Please don't get into a 20 year history of something that will take five hours to finish. Happy Sai with that? Yeah. yeah. So, you would have told uh, Mr. Smith, thank you very much, Mr. Smith, but please understand, why are you here now? Is it become worse now? Uh, and then you, you, you say that. Then he says, it's for one year. At one year, Sahib, you'll ask him, please tell me, for one year, when this pain started in your left knee, did it start, there are only two options. Did it start with any trauma or did it start insidiously? Will you all of us remember two words, trauma or insidious? Now, if it is by itself, it's insidious. If it's trauma, for that one year, get the message, whether the twisting injury or not. Clear on that, Sahib? Yeah. 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 Now, second is, once you have the pain, you ask him the next question, if for over one year, has this pain progressed? Has it become better or some days worse, some days better? So in other words, you know it's for one year, you know the onset, and you know the progression. So what is this called? It's called an ODP. Happy with that, everyone? Yeah. So for one year, Mr. Smith, the, you've had this for one year. It started by itself. Thank you. It's been there for one year. Is it better? Is it worse? Or are there some days better, some days worse? Mm -hmm. Now, once you finish that, uh, Firas, can you just call someone else? Uh, yeah. Next, after onset duration progress, go to the yeah. site. Yeah. Of, yeah. The site. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Tell him, ask him where the pain is. So this is where Sahib, it was very important you got that, okay, which you didn't get because you were a little involved in your history of the trauma. You understand what I'm trying to say, Sahib? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you'll carry on. So how are you going to ask him the site? So where that most people, if you ask the 80% of the local population in any country where the hip is, where do they point to? Most people will call, point to the trochantric area, right? If you ask yeah. a new person. Yeah. Do you want the answer to be that he gets in the trochantric area or as an orthopedic surgeon, do you want the pain to be in the groin? For we orthopedic surgeons know the groin is the hip. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So therefore, I would suggest, let's not use the word, you get pain in your hip. Ask the patient, you get pain in your groin. Right? Clear? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Now, I would suggest, therefore, the next question, therefore, he says pain on the inside of the knee. Then carry on and saying, thank you very much, but it's very important. You also get pain in your left groin. Now, suppose he says yes, then you have to further clarify it with, you get pain in your left groin, which goes down to your knee. Now, you agree that is classical of hip pain, right? Yeah. Yeah. So please ask him and say it in the same manner I've told you. So ask him that. So do you have any pain in the groin that goes down to your knee? Your, uh, knee? Yes, yes, he'll say yes. So then you get that information. Now, once again, I need to ask you about uh, back pain. How are you going to differentiate back pain from hip pain? So ask him for the back pain. All of you, is we as examiners ahead, want to just know whether you're safe and whether you're going to list someone for a knee replacement or incorrectly list someone for a knee replacement and actually the problem is the hip, you see? So we want to know whether you're safe. The minute we talk about sight, the next question will be radiating pain. So these are the two questions. Keep it simple. If this hip, if he says yes in the groin, ask the question about the knee. If he says yes for your back, you will say, thank you very much. Do you have pain which goes down the back of your buttock? 
to the back of your thigh, below your knee, you agree, below the knee, associated yes. with pins and needles. So write it down. These are very straightforward words, which you don't have to, you know, study from any textbook, but this is classical of back pain. So we've covered radiating. You agree? Yes. What are the points we've covered? Sight and radiation. And now we have to move on to someone else. Uh, patient can go on telling you things. So let's, what I would suggest is your first question, very good, rest pain. So let's start. My thing is ask him directly. You have pain at night which wakes you up, right? So it's very clear. Do you have pain at night which wakes you up? Yeah. Now that is classical or very bad pain. You agree? So that's one question. Second, Sahib is which you didn't ask was walking distance, you know, to a certain degree, through the walking distance. So when you ask walking distance, Chetan, it's best to ask walking distance. In America, they ask it in blocks, but in the UK, we don't have blocks. So I would suggest everyone just ask that when you walk, after how many minutes does your knee pain stop you? Is that a simple phrase for everyone? Don't ask, I go to Tesco and stop. You don't know where Tesco is. So tell me, Mr. Smith, how far can you walk in minutes before your left knee pain stops you? Very clear. He'll give you an answer. Suppose he says 10 minutes. Do you agree? It's bad pain enough for a knee replacement. Do you agree, everyone? Suppose he says one and a half hours. The answer is no. So one was night pain. Two was walking distance. What is third? In is stair climbing. All right. So what I have asked. So ask him. Do you have pain when going up and down stairs? Fourth is pain when you get up from a sitting position. Okay. So the best way to remember this is imagine an old man who is sitting in his chair at home watching TV. That is called rest pain. Yeah. So pain at rest. He gets up from the sitting position to go up to sleep. That's pain from getting up from a sitting position. Then he walks to his stairs in his house. What is that? Walking distance. Yeah. Then he goes up the stairs. That is stair climbing. And fifth, he goes to sleep. So the five points of severity are covered. If you remember old man. So these are the... Okay. Do you mind repeating that, uh, Mr. Maxavada? I think that's very useful uh, uh, reminder yeah. sort of um, way. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Vera. So I think that's very, very, very important. Yeah. I just, I'm really quite very impressed. I just wanted to say, we all underestimate the importance of history taking the FRCS, and we think it's um, it, it is easy. Yeah. It's actually yeah. very, very. We it's easy if we know what to say. And we yep. could score very high mark to compensate for effort. But it's very easy. So many people I know failed in the history part. And yep. uh, it's amazing. Thank you so much. So the way I, I'm on this, and just to remind everyone, we are on the point of severity of pain. It's, it's similar, Chetan and Sahib, to aggravating relieving factors, but I'm just putting in a simple manner. So the five points are, imagine an old man sitting in his chair watching TV. That's, and he gets pain. That's rest pain. You agree? That's a good question. Second is he gets up from a sitting position to get up. So that's pain. So ask the Mr. Smith, do you get pain when you get up from a sitting position? Correct. Third is he walks to his stairs. That reminds your mind to ask about walking distance, right? Which is in time. You can ask it in length, but I prefer to ask it in time. Number four, you ask about he goes up his stairs to go to his bedroom. So that's your stair climbing pain, right? So you're asking the question. Mrs. Smith, you get pain in your left knee when you climb upstairs. Yes, you get the answer very quickly, 30 seconds. And number five, he goes to sleep and he gets pain. That's night pain. All right. So yeah. uh, for everyone, after you finish pain, I would say, let's ask other symptoms. In my mind, I'm talking about other symptoms. All right. So pain is your first thing, which we've discovered. Yeah. Second will be swelling. It's an easy question to get an answer. So just yeah. ask him, does your knee swell up? And yeah. it always swollen or are there some days some days was not tiny tiny really doesn't matter are there yep. some days worse some days better the reason i say this is some people get a swelling in the knee yep. and it may be a tumor so it's more or less all the time you know while on and off swelling is classical of what we normally see right so just ask the question is it swollen answer is yes all the time or are there some days worse some days better right yep. the next question i would suggest we ask is giving way. It's an easy question and you asked it perfectly. Everyone can ask it in another way, but keep to one phrase. And yeah. all of you are preparing for the exam, just stick to one phrase which you guys want to use. I may use one frame, but whatever it is, don't change. Don't on Tuesday ask this it and Wednesday ask it in a different manner. That's what I'm trying to suggest to you. So our last question is, Mr. Smith, does it ever happen that your knee collapses under you? That's how I ask it. It's a very simple question. Does your knee collapse under you? You can ask what you ask, which is absolutely fine. And then 
can someone tell me what are the symptoms of giving way in a typical ACL knee in a young, not Mr. Smith, where he's 70, but if you have a 25 year old rugby, there's a difference between what I, why I put this up is there's a difference between asking the question of giving way to a young rugby player compared to a 70 year old man. Now, in a young rugby player, Abdullah said it perfectly. The question you'll ask is, Mr. Smith, does it ever happen that if you're either walking or running and you suddenly change direction or pivot, pivot, most rugby players know the word pivot, will your knee collapse under you? All right, so that's classical of an ACL. The second history, Abdullah, which I was trying to get is ACL injury rugby players find that going downstairs, their knee collapses. Yes, they're always holding on to bandages, however hard they're working on physios. Use muscles, but they feel their knee gives it. So two questions for the young person. For the older person, it's just the knee collapse under you. Mainly they have it when they get up from a sitting position. So Abdullah Kat, so the next question is locking. So for locking, I think Shiram asked, I asked the question very clearly, does it ever happen that your knee gets stuck and you cannot straighten it completely. There are five words, there's nothing more to it, unless Shwan or uh, Ed Firas or anyone else has another way of asking Sorry, it. Can you repeat? I, I just, uh, sometimes I ask, does, does your knee lock? And you, they, they seem to understand that sometimes. Mm. You're stuck in lock. No. Uh, the reason, Shwan, I agree, most of them, but sometimes patients get, conf I don't like to be, them to confuse locking and stiffness. So, you know, that's where I feel Sometimes I, I agree. because I they agree. Mean stiffness and I, I don't care whether they are stiff. You know, stiff yeah. knees I don't operate on anywhere. They're the last patient I want to do anything for to, to a certain degree. I so, think uh, I'm, I, I think it's likely that I have uh, picked that uh, from you because it's exactly the same sentence that I would say. Mm -hmm. I would ask, does your knee get stuck in one position and you can't move it? Move it, yeah, correct. Uh, the, the, the third symptom. And now there's only one symptom left which people forget. And I ask the question, has it ever happened that your knees become more deformed? In other words, Mr. Smith, have you become more knock kneed or bow legged? All right. So that's your fifth symptom. Clear? Very simple. Ask that. Now, once we finish these five points, which is pain, but pain, we agree, we subdivide into many points, yeah, which is the onset, the duration, the progress, then the site. And in sight, Angad, if you remember, we divide into radiating pain for hip and knee, hip and back. Then we moved on to severity, which were five questions. Then we moved on to other symptoms, which were swelling, locking, swelling, giving way, locking, and deformity. Now is the time when I ask, please tell me, you know, Mr. Smith, you told me about your 20 history. So I put my heading under past knee history. All right. So under past knee history, I ask all these things like, please tell me, tell now 20 years ago, what happened to you? So he'll say, yes, Mr. 20 years ago, I had a fall off a motorbike. Now, as long as we've asked the main thing, he can carry on about his 20-year history, you see? And here I asked about, in your past knee history, have you had any operations to your knee? He said, yes or no. Have you had any painkillers for your knee? And do you use any stick or support? The only three questions I want, all right? I don't want anything else. So have you had any operations? Have you had any physiotherapy? Have you had any painkillers? And do you use a stick? Yeah, so that's what I want to know from treatment taken for his knee. So past history includes any trauma. And in that trauma, I want to ask, and I'll specifically ask, it's very important for me, in your past history of your knee, have you had any problems with your knee in childhood, knee or hip in childhood or infancy? Have you had any fractures of your pelvic, femur or tibia? And have you had any knee operations in the past? He'll say yes or he'll say no. Yeah, that, that's all. Now we move on to what would uh, fill us someone else if you don't want. Okay, yeah, no. Have any medical problems, and someone who has no medical problem will give a list of a huge amount of medical problems. That's real life. Do yeah. you want that answer, or do you want to know as an orthopedic surgeon what is important for you? So okay. I suggest that once you finish your uh, history of the past knee history, before you go to past medical history, just clarify in my mind, what I call other joint history. Because you will have a patient who's a rheumatoid arthritis as an intermediate case. That patient would have had a left hip done, right hip done, left elbow done, right shoulder done. You agree? Yeah, I agree. This is a good time to introduce what I call in my heading, other joint history. Then your other joint history, I'll ask. Now tell me, Mr. You, had, you were talking about your left hip. Which hip have you had replaced? You'll say my right hip. And your shoulder, is that correct? You'll say right shoulder. Yeah, so you get information about other joints. Happy with that? Yes. 
Yeah, that needs leads you nicely to medical history. Now, I would suggest in your mind for preparation, you have to have some things which trigger your mind that you're moving from one to the other, not to the examiner, but to yourself. And I would suggest this is a good time to ask history of allergy. So once you finish the knee and joints, let's in our mind from today, always remember that before we go to anything like medical and social history, we'll ask, are you, do you have any allergies? Happy with that? Yeah. Right. So this is what, if you know, notice uh, Saheb had asked, so you're going to ask that. Do you have any allergy? He says yes or no. And after this, when I ask my medical history, I ask it very clearly like this. That I ask him, do you have any diabetes? Yes or no? Why am I asking diabetes, Ranjit? Uh, because it's important uh, for the uh, anesthetic point of view, as well as for infection. Are you anesthetics? Uh, people know. So why is it important for me and you? What is the real crux of diabetes? Yeah, because it's, uh, the chance of infection is high. Fantastic. So it's our counseling, all right? So what I'm trying to get at for you is that we are not here to judge anesthetic fitness. I'm here to counsel you and tell you, look, you are higher risk or lower risk. So that's all I ask for medical history. So let's ask for diabetes. We have to ask the next question. I ask, do you have any problems with blood pressure? Yes or no? If they say yes, and most people know hypertension, why am I asking that? Um... Because blood pressure is one of the important things. If you have unstable blood hypertension or if you have fulminating, you, really have, you are not going to be a candidate for elective surgery, right? So that's the question I ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Number three, I ask for, do you have any, uh, do, you do you have any, have you had any recent heart attack or stroke? Why is that important? Because uh, he might be on any, some blood thinners. More than that. Elective surgery cannot be done with recent MI or stroke. You remember, this is what we want to look at. So when you know, we, we have a grid as examiners. We want to show, so there are contraindications to joint replacement surgery. And one of the contraindications to elective surgery is recent MI or stroke. Do you agree? Yeah. So let's ask that directly. So you ask him about blood pressure. You ask him about diabetes. Have you had any recent heart attack or stroke? He says no. Then you go on to... I ask a direct question, do you have any breathless? So I want you to stop you from walking. Is it your knee pain or your breathlessness? All right, because as orthopedic surgeons, I don't care whether he's taking this for breath or not. All I want to know, if his breathlessness stops him before his knee pain, do you agree we'll not offer him knee replacement surgery? You agree? Yeah. Yeah, if his knee pain stops him before breathlessness, of course you'll offer it to him. You'll tell him he's high risk, but you'll offer it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So let's just ask this question. Uh, that's the same question for angina. So you'll ask Mr. Smith, do you have any chest pain? He says, yes. You're going to ask him, what stops you, Mr. Smith? Does your chest pain stop you or your left knee pain stop you? Clear? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's my, that my, that's my seventh question on history, on medical. Yeah. Then I move on to just ask a very straightforward question on to drugs which affect me. I ask him, do you take any blood thinners? Why is that important? Because it affects me. Yeah. Do you take any drugs like steroids? Because it affects me because his risk is higher. Do you take any drugs for inflammation like rheumatoid arthritis? Don't ask him, do you take any, you know, metotrexate? He doesn't know what you're talking about. Just say, do you take any drugs which you take for any inflammation like rheumatoid arthritis? That's your third question. Are there any other drugs which you think need to be asked? Or is that mainly there? Uh, we ask for blood thinners, medications, steroids. Uh... Steroids. Don't use the word medication. You know, they can take anything. So let's say steroids is important, anti-inflammatory drugs like metotrex are important and blood thinners is important, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I ask him, have you had any surgery which has left you with any leaking wound or sore area, right? Do you agree is an important question? Yeah, that's important. And that's all I ask in medical history. Then if he offers for thyroid and things, then I get it. You know, you can't ask everyone everything. Yeah. And the last thing I end with social history. So for social history, I ask him, you said you were a plumber. Do you still work or do you have people to work for you? All right. So that's one. And number two, you smoke. You agree smoking is important? Yes. Sir. High risk. Yeah. And number three, are there any activities you have stopped doing only because you're left knee pain? Because people may stop playing golf because all the golf partners have died. But that doesn't mean you have to do a knee replacement for them. Yeah? You do it because they get pain in their left knee. And that stopped them. So that's a very direct question. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I end. So... Sahib, you Medical comorbidities, leading questions, please. As Mr. Max Fafala said, if you start open questions, you'll end up nowhere and you waste the whole five minutes. Leading questions, focusing on three points. Previous joint surgery, ask the patient, have you had previous joint surgery? 
have you had any complications? And then he can tell you, you know, there weren't infection or so forth. But Viraz, thank you very much. That's a good point. I've never thought of it, but I want to say it. Uh, I, want to, I want to make sure I say it. Thank you. Very good. And so, yeah, so can I ask? The previous joint surgery, any contraindication to operation like recent MI or stroke, and any comorbidities that affect the outcome. So these three things, yeah? Joint surgery, morbidities that could, that would be contraindications, or comorbidities that affect the outcome. You don't want to ask them that one last question. Is there anything else you want to tell me? They might tell you, oh yes, I had a TB when I was three years old. They might tell you things that you, 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 was, you never thought about. And, um, and they might say, well, you know, he, he never asked me. You know, you just have to ask them and they will sometimes volunteer that information. So it's, it's worthwhile. It could be the question that makes you- It be what Shuan said. So end with what I had said and make sure we end with Shuan's last statement. I'm going to make it clear that I do it next time when we teach, we'll say that. That summarize for the patient. And this is what Shuan's telling you is exactly what I'm going to tell you later on. Is the most important person in the room is who? is the patient, all right? It's not the examiners, it's the patient. And that's you have to summarize to the patient. So that's a nice way of summarizing it. And then let's all ask the question, have I missed anything? Fantastic, Ron, thanks for that. So at least we end with that, all right? Clear on history? Clear that's very clear, thank you. So, so let's, uh, one good point, and that's what I want to tell you. Let us most likely, and because I've given the examiner 25 years ago, people who've given the exam earlier will, will testify, that for short cases, everyone, most likely the patient is prepared for you, Anwar, all right? For short cases. They'll be in a shorts or a skirt, you know, ready for you on a bed, right? For an intermediate case, it's very likely the patient will still be sitting in his shirt and trousers, right? Very likely. Hence, I want you now to ask him, he's not going to do it on screen, so don't worry, he's not going to strip, but... That's what I said, I think that... Is, because, uh, no, but imagine exam, what are you going to tell him? Tell him. Tell him. I'll, I'll, tell him. Have you got some underwear? So can you take the trouser off for me, please? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, can you please stand up? And uh, I'm looking from the front on inspection. Okay. Looking for well, one minute. Wait. I'm, I know you're going to, but when are you going to inspect his shoes? Or have you forgotten, truthfully? Uh, after gate, I would do the inspection. That's okay. what I normally do. And looking from the front side and back. The shoes, shoes, the shoes. Shoes, all right. You agree? Yeah, so, uh, as well, yeah. yeah. So everyone, so what I would suggest is, is, a, is a, memorize it, practice on your wives, your family members. Mr. Smith, do you mind removing your trousers and your socks and shoes? And please pass me your shoes. And do you have a stick? You know, look around like that. Do you have a stick? Now you make the statement, you'll never forget stick and walking aid. You'll never forget shoes. And you'll never forget to make him undress. You happy with that or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, so please yeah. tell him that again. I want the same statement what I said. So, Mr. Smith, do you mind? Do you mind taking your trouser off and your shoes and your socks off as well? I'm looking for a stick. No, 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 and, and, and ask him. No, look, not looking. Just ask him. <laughs> Mr. Smith, do you have a stick or a stick? You know, move your head around as if you're asking him. Who's the most important person? The patient. Focus it on him. So, ask him. Mr. Here, do you have a stick? Mr. Yeah. Smith? Mm -hmm. um, Take your trousers off and uh, also your socks and shoes, please. And uh, do you use any stick? Yes, I use a stick. Okay. And then say, please pass me your shoes. Please pass okay. me your shoes. And, and I'll look. You and you look at the shoes while he's undressing. Yeah. So it's because best to look at the shoes while he's undressing. Happy enough? Yeah, yeah. And next we'll do, what do you want to do next in your big headache? Do you want to do gait or do you want to do infection? I want to look from the front. From you describe shoes for the exam. Yeah. You can get away with for lower limb for all the extremities, all right? So, yeah. the way to do shoes, imagine now your patient is undressing, right? So, you can't do anything else. So, it's a good time to see shoes. You all agree, Anwar? Yeah. So, you pick up the shoes. Watch what I'm doing. Now, what am I looking for now from the side? Look at it. Can you see that there? Yeah. Yes, we can see. We can see the shoes, yeah. So, I'm look, what am I pointing to? So, the first thing I say, there's no external heel raise. Agree? That's the correct word? Yeah. yeah. Then I put my hand here and I put it inside. What am I looking for with my hand inside here? It's for an internal heel raise. Happy? Yeah. Yeah. Then I put my hand inside the medial arch. And the word I'm going to use is there's no medial arch support. Yeah. yeah. 
So why am I saying this? You all agree that passing the exam is not speaking English correctly. It's speaking the language of orthopedics. Right? Yeah. So are these correct words rather than souls, in souls, you know? So there's no external heel support. There's no internal heel. There's no medial arc support. Then I turn the shoe over like this. And I say there's no undue wear pattern on one side compared to the other. Happy, happy, good phrase. Yeah. And there's no stretch suggestive of a bunion or a bunion it, right? Yeah. So can you repeat that? So there's no, start again, Anwar, there's no? There's no external uh, heel raise. Heel, uh, shoe, there's no heel internal. Raise. There's no there's, internal heel raise. And there is uh, no asymmetrical wear looking uh, from the, the back. Yeah. And there's and no then, bunion. No, uh, I don't know. Right, no that stretch, no stretch. Yeah, there's no stretch suggestive of a bunion or a bunionette. Yeah. Okay. Now you don't have to say all this, but at least you can make your effort of actually looking at it correctly. Yeah. All right. But what I don't want you to do is don't just pick up the shoes as if you're halfway through, just look at it and then throw it away. You know, if you're looking at shoes correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So for the point I'm going to make for you for the clinical exams, this is not MRCS. Yeah. What you do is we are going to watch and every move you make is correct. And you can't say something and say, do something and say something else. All right. So if you're looking at shoes, don't look at the front of your shoe and say there's no asymmetrical wear. How can you look at the asymmetrical wear from the front? You agree with what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay. So do it like that. Yeah. Good. So that's where we are for shoe. And then I progress to inspection and clinical findings, which Viras, I think we can it's be over one hour. We can do it. Yeah. A, I just wanted to give a flavor of something. And if it works well, we can do it like we discussed last time. Yeah. I think it worked very well. I just ignored the examiner. Really ignored it. Like what I'm doing in my clinic. Mm -hmm. And I got this from examining the students. Because as an examiner, when I see a student coming to me, just looking at me and doing like this and look, My first impression that this candidate is not confident. But the candidate who comes, listen to me, say, after I, I tell him, then even looking at me and just concentrating with the patient, I would really, really respect this candidate. And this is what I did in my exam. The yeah. other thing I, I, I started to work on establishing a rapport with, uh, with the patient quickly. And this is exactly what, what Schwan said, uh, more or less. I start to, to make like, we are friends. Hi, how are you today? I know, uh, was just a quick question in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Was the journey okay? Uh, was your journey okay today to come over here to the hospital? And I'm sure the examiner and the patient will just both get relaxed because you are now a, a professional consultant. You are you are talking to your patient and taking care even how and what is comfortable now. Fantastic. Very correct, Usam. I can't yeah. agree more. I can't agree more. Yeah. yeah. So and and make jokes if you if if there is something about jokes, make jokes. No problem. Okay. If you are examining uh, uh, like something and it will be ticklish. Oh, be careful, this will be techlish. And then crack a joke, no problem. At the end of the day, what I've noticed that it is, it is not very formal. And even if you miss something, but you establish this report and you made the patient at ease, the examiner will be at ease. And then you will reach uh, quickly to the answers. He will not play with you much and the, exam and the patient will help you. So this is, these are my simple tips establish report ignore the examiner while you are talking to people just concentrate as if you are the, in the clinic and actually think about the examiner as a medical student mm -hmm. and you are showing him how you are doing this that's it thank you yeah, thank you um, to build on what Hussam said, it's a couple of points where you guys can get into trouble without realizing you've got into trouble. Your examiners will ask the patient what they think of you um, at the end of the exam. If you have a patient that you think if something is going to be painful to them, turn around, turn, turn around to your examiner and say, 
this part of the exam will become be very painful for the patient or will be painful for the patient. I do not wish to inflict pain on this patient in this scenario, uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in this setting. Um, they will say, no, go ahead, and then it's on them, but you take care. If they wince, you stop, okay? Just say, I'm not comfortable. Uh, if they, they usually say, no, move on, leave that step, but, but they, they recognize the fact that you said that that is painful. For example, a patient who potentially has CRPS, I said, uh, this might hurt if I touch you. Is it okay to touch you? I didn't actually touch the patient until I checked if they have pain there. And then I rubbed the leg. And they said, what are you looking for? I'm looking for CRPS. They like the fact that I asked permission first before I did it. Okay? Um, Absolutely. These are very, very important things. They are not simple at all. They are essential. And they are pass and fail. Some people, that's why some people don't know why they failed the exam. They said, oh, I only had a case of knee arthritis, what we see every day in clinic. And I ask all the questions. And, and they're surprised why they failed. All these points are more important to the examiner because we all know that patient has knee arthritis from the minute they get into the room. But all these points are for safety. They're looking for a safe surgeon who, who respect the patient, dignity of the patient, and is safe uh, also. Safe means they will offer the right operation for the right condition. So yeah, mm -hmm. these are essential things. Mm -hmm. So Perajia, I, I, so the takeaway message with all of us has said that from today onwards, there's no way that the examiner is important. And that's a fundamental difference between trainees and non-trainees to a certain degree, that we really worry too much that the examiners will, there's a problem with, you know, we are, we are focused too much on the examiners. And all of us have said that you will focus from today onwards only on the patient. That's your main rapport to have with. And I also like a point that when they undress, I always say, please have a seat or you know, look after them. Another point for the history, you are not to take a history if you're standing and the patient is sitting, all right? Ask for a chair, tell the examiner, please, I, I, I need a chair. You paid 1,500 pounds for the exam, the least you can get is a chair, all right? So ask for a chair and sit down. So no standing. I want, who Sam says. To absorb everything, change your, be maybe some of us, we need to change the behavior even. Yeah. To, to, it takes time, it's not easy to, to adapt. Thank you. So um, that's that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, I think uh, I think if everyone is happy, we will uh, end this session. We could go forever <laughs> until tomorrow morning about it. Uh, we'll have to end at some point. So thank you very much, Mr. Malik Shimavala. Thank you. Thank you. Your input here. You're making a huge difference to um, to to everyone who is um, attending this. Thank you. Sir. Um, thank you. And uh, I'm sure we all appreciate it, to be honest. And uh, thanks again to Shwan, uh, who comes straight from work. Yeah. Um, and Hussam, uh, Sarfraz, who's joining us from, he's an international candidate. He's joining us from Saudi Arabia. Well, he's, he's passed that exam, but uh, he's now supporting us. And um, to Athar, who's left at the moment, but uh, he's also was here to start with. Next week, we'll be more teaching. And hopefully we'll be able to offer you um, uh, more practice again next week. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again for us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.